you need to ask yourself, what is it that the world is saying about Africa? And, and I want to just quickly show you some interesting things. This is what is going on. You know, everywhere in the world now, every day, every day, there is a conference on opportunities in Africa somewhere in the world. Every day. The world has come back to rediscover this precious gift called Africa. And whilst we Africans are too busy pursuing money, going to work on things that we are not called to work on, climbing different career ladders only to discover it's on the wrong wall, and therefore we are seeing broken walls and everything on that, we are so being frustrated with everything. And so basically when you look around, you see so much commotion. Everybody going to places where they don't know. And all of them in a rush, sometimes to get home where there's no light. Generally, people are frustrated. And you can see it in the way we relate with each other. But yet, whilst you are seeing frustration, the rest of the world is looking at Africa and they are salivating because they can see beyond what is obvious to everybody. They are looking at Africa and they are seeing amazing potential. It's been said that 64% of the resources that the world needed as of two years ago was located in Africa. Why did I say two years ago? That was when they said it. Now, because there have been so much devastation all across the world, especially due to kind of climate, climatic change um, uh, effect. Now, if you look at what Africa is, the role of Africa, it, I'm sure it has now gone up to more than 68%. Africa is rising. I want you to look at this. Look very closely. Can you see it? What do you see? Or where is the trigger for this pistol? Do you understand? That the greatness of Africa is going to be a reason because Nigeria is going to catalyze. Until Nigeria triggers the growth of Africa, nothing can happen. In 2001, Nigeria hosted President Bill Clinton, or former President Bill Clinton, at the National Assembly. And it was a joint session of both the Senate and the members of the House of Representatives. And Bill Clinton said something that was amazing. He said, in the 21st century, the wealth of any nation will not be calibrated by what lies under its feet or the feet of its people, but by what lies between the ears of the people. I want you to understand that, in a sense, oil is not the wealth of the Nigerians. Before oil was found, we were a great nation. And yet what has happened is that we have now become distracted by what lies underneath that we don't seem to see what lies ahead. 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 Every generation must run its own part of that race and hand over the baton to the next generation. You have to understand that baton many times is not just a good name. It's part of what makes a baton. It's not just companies. It's part of what makes a button. But a real button is a nation. It is so critical that we are able to deliver a nation that our children will be grateful and proud to call their own. You must understand that generations are more than people living in just a time and space. Generation has to do with one the fucking simple things. Number one, that the people agree as one people. Somebody say one people. That they speak with one voice. Somebody say with me one voice. That they act with one purpose. Somebody say one purpose. And most importantly, that they create with one vision. This is what makes an effective generation. When you hear about a generation, you are talking about one people, one voice, one purpose, one mission, one goal to accomplish one thing. And each one of them is doing whatever they have to do to ensure that that one thing is accomplished. So understand this, every generation is a link to the next generation. So if there is, what you do is, every time your generation is done, you pass over 
that button to the next generation. And if you don't pass it quickly, you will all be disqualified. I want you to understand something very interesting. That in relay race, even if the first person on the first lap did the best, and the second person on the next lap did the best, and the third person did the best, but the last lap, the guy fell down. Do they give anything to all the people? In a sense, the labors of our heroes past are, are tied to the success of our heroes present. There have been three generations in Nigeria so far. The first generation was called Generation of Liberation. Remember that a generation is a people with a common cause, a common goal. So there were these people who had a common cause. And some of these guys, you know them. We call them the generation's icons. These guys were amazing human beings. But I need you to understand, it was not their profession that brought them greatness. It was their alignment to the purpose of their generation. Then there came another one called the, the generation of revelation. The mandate and the purpose of this generation was to show how great Nigeria could be as a nation. It was in their time that we found mineral resources in economically viable quantity. Oil was found. But that not just oil. Recently, Obi Ezekwesili, as Minister of Solid Minerals, discovered a document in Nigerian Geosciences or Geological Survey that said Nigeria has 33 other mineral resources of economically viable quantity. Any of these resources can sustain a nation. And yet, by 1976, Nigeria was rated the sixth highest quality standard of education in the world going by the GCO level ranking. In 1976, 130 dollars was exchanged for 100 naira. One naira was 1.3 dollars. By 2006, 133 naira was exchanging for one dollar. When this generation took over the button, the University College of Ibadan, which was called, which is now UI, if you graduated from UI, you did not need to do any further exams to get into Cambridge, Oxford, or the, any of those other, because they were considered to be at par. Now you have to do SAT, GMAT, QMAT, Ed, all math. This generation, unfortunately, did not manage its opportunities well. Most of them were people that were trained abroad, but they forgot the purpose for which they were enjoying the largesse of Nigeria. They became carried away by the fact that they could buy air-conditioned cars that their parents didn't have. And they could begin to live in parts of town that the colonial masters had stayed. And they started to get confused about the purpose of their generation. And they started to see money in ways that they had never seen money before. And before you knew it, they took health out of our hospitals, took education out of our schools, they took safety out of our roads. They took light out of our bulbs. They took water out of our taps. And now, that generation is a generation that will not send its own children to the schools that it attended. It can't even allow their grandchildren to be born in the hospitals they gave birth to their own children to. Walesho Inka looked at that generation and said it's a wasted generation. Remember that the generation is not based on age. It is based on purpose. That to every purpose, there is a time. And this generation has a different mandate. I don't know whether you are there or part of this generation. But I want to announce to you that the generation of transformation has been emerged, has been released. And the question is going to be, are you going to be a member of that generation? This is the generation that is mandated by God to build the Nigeria we want. Clearly, they will understand that there is hard work to be done. Change is imminent. And not just any kind of change. It's, it's going to be between two kinds of change. Number one is whether you will have improvement. Or number two, whether you will have transformation. An improvement is when something becomes better, but it doesn't become totally different. So between 
the lava and the pooper, it's the same. It, you know, it's different, but it's still the same. You know, an improvement is what you do when you paint a building. It's still the same structure. But transformation is what happens where what you become is nothing like what you used to be. I want you to understand that nations cannot be transformed. People can be. Nigeria does not need transformation. Nigeria needs transformers. When transformers arise and shine, the nation becomes transformed. Transformation is not an agenda. It's a mission to people. You don't transform agriculture. You transform people who will transform agriculture. When you think about our security system, do we need improvement or transformation? When you think about our healthcare across Nigeria, do we need improvement or transformation? When you look at our Nigerian police force, what do we do? I will show you how nations are transformed. I'll give you a very interesting example. Watch this. This is what one generation and another generation can do. I need you to understand that this is just 13 years difference. 13. A picture was taken of this city from this angle in 1990. Look at all of what there is. Can you see it? By 13 years later, in the hand of another generation, look at what they had produced. The question you ask is, where were all these buildings here? They were there. They were just visions waiting for visionaries. They were waiting for people who understood the mandate of their time in that space. Does somebody understand it? This, ladies and gentlemen, is Dubai. And this is the World Trade Center, the tallest building in Dubai as at 1990 with 38 floors. This is that same building by 2003, 13 years later. What is this? Oh, I didn't hear you. What's this? What's this? What's it called? Say it now. One generation delivered this to the next generation. This one is delivering this. That's just the difference. One generation. You are the one we are waiting for. You can come up with an idea. Understand, leadership is the mentality of assumed responsibility. How many words come together to form responsibility? Two, what are they? Response and ability. Fantastic. Ah, let me see. Eh? What's this? I? What's I? I, is that a word or a letter? It's a word. Okay, so how many words come together to form responsibility? Three, what are they? Response. I. I respond based on my ability. I have the ability to respond or choose how I respond. Your job is to create a platform that will bring change to the area where you are called to transform.